good morning today we will discuss about interconversion of states of matter we know that matter exists in five different states solid liquid gas plasma bose einstein condensate but we will be focusing primarily on the first three states solid liquid and gas now the question arises is it possible to change a matter from one state to another like if you want to change a material existing in solid state to liquid or say a liquid to gas or a gas to liquid how is it possible like what would it take for matter to move from one state to another so to understand this in a better way let us look into this picture now let me just zoom it a little bit you can see the particle arrangement the particle arrangement in solid liquid and gas in solid the particles are tightly packed in liquid the space is slightly more than solids and in gas the space is far far more than that of solids so the reason behind it this is that in solids the particles are strongly bound to each other they have a strong force of attraction this force of attraction is slightly less in liquids and even minimal in gases so that's the reason why the particles are freely moving inside the gaseous state of matter now what if i want to change a material from solid to liquid state if the particles are so tightly bound how would they change to liquid state so the reason for bringing about a change in state is so dependent on one parameter what is it energy energy determines the state in every single state of matter a certain amount of energy is associated with the particles this energy is actually responsible for binding them together now if we want to bring about a change from one state to another we have to provide external agency external energy some external agency needs to provide this energy so as to overcome this force of attraction between the particles and eventually that will lead to a change in state so providing energy is going to bring about a change in the state of matter now this is one way of bringing about a change in state of matter now you might be wondering that how is it possible how providing energy is going to bring about a change in the state of matter let me help you a little bit we will conduct this simulator activity now i have considered a material which is in the solid state see the solid portion is highlighted there are three different states solid liquid and gas see you can understand the difference by the particle arrangement so let's get back to the solid state where the particles are so tightly packed there is a thermometer inserted inside this setup so as to keep a check on the temperature right now it is at 13 kelvin and the solid inside this solid the materials are so tightly packed now let's provide a little amount of heat now it is a symbolical representation of heat the symbol of fire so it is representing how energy is been provided you can understand this by looking into the rise in temperature see it is rising now it is 76 77 82 83 85 so rapidly the temperature is rising and what change can you observe you can see that the particles have gained sufficient energy to move about their position they have gained energy to overcome the force of attraction existing between them and now they are freely moving okay let's stop for a while let's now decrease the temperature again a symbolical representation it's not ice it's actually showing decrease in temperature again keep your eye on the thermometer the temperature is decreasing so with decrease in temperature again the particles will come back to their original state see how the particles are coming closer and closer see 
so we had begun from the solid state and again we are coming back to the same state do you remember the temperature it was around 17 kelvin see we have further gone down now it is 3 kelvin 2 kelvin now the particles 1 kelvin now the temperature is 1 kelvin and see the particles have all come closer so they are now in the solid state so by this activity you can understand that by increasing the temperature also you can over allow the particles to overcome the force of attraction and bring about a change in state and by decreasing the temperature again you can bring about a change in state so changing the temperature changing the temperature is one way of bringing about a change in the state of matter now what are these different processes called what are these different processes called that we'll be studying one by one when heat energy is supplied to a material in solid state then that heat energy is being utilized in bringing about the change in state from solid to liquid that heat energy is actually responsible for overcoming the force of attraction between the particles and that helps to bring about an interconversion of state from solid to liquid so when a solid is heated the particles begin to vibrate with greater speed and begin to move more freely then at a particular temperature the solid melts and changes into liquid if you have a container filled with ice and if you keep it in an open space you will find that after some time it has changed into water so the temperature at which this process takes place that is a fixed temperature and that temperature is called melting point the process is called melting also known as fusion now from where does ice get that heat the ice is absorbing heat from the surroundings so the temperature at which ice melts the melting point of ice is 0 degree celsius or 273 kelvin Kelvin is the standard unit of temperature. Now, just try to understand this situation. If you are having a thermometer with you and you are inserting that thermometer inside the container that was initially having ice, once the ice starts melting, if you keep your eye fixed on the thermometer, you will find that the thermometer records no increase in temperature so if the ice is absorbing heat from the surroundings where is that heat going usually absorbing heat should lead to a rise in temperature like temperature is a direct indicator of the amount of heat energy present in any substance so if the temperature is not rising where is that heat going where is that heat hidden that's where we use the word latent latent means hidden actually the heat energy that is being absorbed from the surroundings is being utilized to overcome the force of attraction between the particles and that is actually being used to bring about the change in state so since the process is called melting rather fusion so it is called latent heat of fusion the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kilogram of a solid into liquid at atmospheric pressure at its melting point is called the latent heat of fusion. Whatever amount of heat is required to completely change 1 kilogram of solid into liquid at a fixed temperature at atmospheric pressure, normal atmospheric pressure is called latent heat of fusion. Now, if a liquid changes into vapor state, again certain amount of heat energy is required because the particles in a vapor state of matter are far more separated as compared to a liquid. So, again the particles inside the liquid state have to gain some energy to overcome the force of attraction, leave their places and move freely in the space. 
so that energy is provided externally and by gaining that energy that interconversion of state that is from liquid to vapor state takes place now for example if you are asked to heat up water in a container you gradually keep on providing heat to water at one particular temperature what will you observe you will observe that water has started boiling so boiling is the process when at a particular temperature liquid starts changing into another state like after the liquid has started boiling gradually you will find that steam has started coming out of it so the temperature at which steam started starts coming out that particular temperature is called the boiling point of water so if you insert a thermometer inside the container in which the water is boiling you will find again the thermometer records no increase in temperature the temperature is fixed at 100 degrees celsius or 373 kelvin so again the heat is hidden whatever heat is being provided to water that gets utilized in bringing about the change in state so using the term vaporization we name this heat as latent heat of vaporization now just remember again that latent means hidden the heat is hidden but it is being utilized to bring about the change in state so the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of a liquid into gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point is called the latent heat of vaporization now one question is it always necessary in that a solid should always change into liquid when heated can't it directly change into the gaseous state is it possible it is possible just think of few examples of materials that you might be having in your home which directly changes from solid to gaseous state there is no liquid state in between have you seen any such material you have just take for example camphor when camphor burns it directly changes into vapor similarly naphthalene we keep naphthalene balls inside our clothes to keep it safe from insects now when a new naphthalene ball is kept inside your almira in your wardrobe inside the clothes after some time you find that the size of that naphthalene has decreased so how is it possible obviously by gaining heat from the surroundings the solid material has changed into vapor so this process is called sublimation now apart from naphthalene and camphor one more material which shows this property is ammonium chloride you can see a simple setup where there is a china dish containing ammonium chloride over which a funnel has been kept an inverted funnel has been kept to collect the vapors of ammonium chloride and so that the vapors don't escape the mouth of the funnel has been closed using a cotton plug so once ammonium chloride is being heated with the help of that burner it directly changes from solid to vapor state but as we are not allowing these vapors to escape these vapors get collected inside the funnel gradually the vapors cool down and are deposited on the walls of the funnel now just remember an opposite process is happening right now right now when the vapors cool down they directly change into solid state so this process is called solidification when gaseous matter changes into solid state so the solidified ammonium chloride is deposited on the walls of the funnel you can see in the labeling it's written ammonium chloride solidified so now you have studied about the three processes melting vaporization and sublimation now just answer my question what is similar in all these processes any similarity there is 
The similarity is that each of this process takes place by addition of heat. Like when you add heat to solid, it changes to liquid. When you add heat to liquid, it changes into vapor. When you add heat to solid, it directly changes into gas. What if instead of adding heat, we remove heat? Let's go re revert to the same activity and see. So using the same activity, now we are considering it for water. You can see two different colors have been shown in the particle. Two white balls and one brown ball. So it is H2O. So presently the temperature is fixed at 1198 Kelvin. Obviously water is not in liquid state. The particles are randomly moving. So now what if I cool it down? Again, a symbolical representation for decreasing the temperature. Gradually, you can see the mercury in thermometer is dropping. That indicates that the temperature is decreasing. So, as temperature starts decreasing, you find again the particles are coming closer. So, that indicates that a change of state is taking place. Can anybody name the process? Like, what is the process called when water changes to ice? Obviously, that process is called freezing. So, when heat energy is extracted out of any material, that is also responsible for bringing about a change of state. So, that is called freezing. So, application of heat is responsible for changing the state as well as removal of heat is responsible for change of state. So, this process is called freezing. Understood? Now, one question. Is only temperature responsible for bringing about a change of state? Or there may be some other parameter that can also bring about a change of state. Let's think about it. Let me help you out a little bit. You can see this setup where there is a special arrangement for applying pressure. Apart from changing the temperature, like for instance I am changing the temperature, I am applying heat to the content inside this setup, the temperature is rising and the particles are freely moving. But apart from the change in temperature, you can also observe a change in pressure. Like if you have kept your eye on the pressure meter, see I am doing it again. See, as the temperature is rising, you can see there is a change in pressure. So, by adjusting this particular parameter as well, we can bring about a change in state of matter. Let's try it out. So, you can see there is a setup for pumping. Isn't it? So, there is a setup for pumping. And there is also a setup for pressing the lead inside. So, by this also you are applying pressure. See what happened. Let's return the lead. Some of the particles are still there. Okay, so let's again press the lead inside and see what happens. See again the pressure is rising. So by applying pressure also we are able to bring about a change in state. By applying pressure you can see you are bringing the particles closer, isn't it? So, by applying pressure, again if the particles come closer, there is a change of state. So, this is the manner in which gases are compressed. I will show you the example of oxygen. See, the particles are present inside and we will vary the pressure. We are varying the pressure. You can see, while I am pumping, the pressure is changing. This is one way of increasing the pressure. So, you can see by applying pressure, what is happening. 
so obviously this is one way of changing the state of matter or let's press the lid inside by compressing again we are able to bring about a change in state so this process is called liquefaction when a gaseous state changes into liquid state it is called liquefaction now one process that i would like to mention here as well is called condensation this is something that you readily observe almost every single day in your homes isn't it so when the vapors cool down they change to liquid state like you might have seen when a lid is put on any container containing hot food after some time if you remove the lid you find that water droplets are trickling from the surface so how does it happen this happens only because the vapors have cooled down and settled on the surface of that lid so this process do uh, that happens due to decrease in temperature that the vapor state changes to liquid state is called condensation and condensation is primarily responsible for formation of clouds so the two parameters that bring about a change in state first is the temperature either by increasing the temperature or decreasing it and second is pressure in these two ways so temperature and pressure are the two parameters responsible for interconversion of state of matter for bringing about a change in state of matter so we will stop here today the remaining concepts will be dealt in the next session thank you